Hey guys, welcome back. Last time we were able to set up our .env and we can read from our environment variables depending on if we're running on, on development or production. So right now I want us to start working on setting up Axios as our HTTP library. We could actually use it out of the box. We start doing axios.get.post, it would work. But there are things that we are going to need to be common on almost every request. For example, when we are going to be connecting to the same base URL for the backend. So we don't want to be re repeating that every time we say access.post. We don't want to be providing the whole URL. We can just say maybe slash login. Just a second, let me pull up our, our API. So you see what, what I mean. Okay, so instead of us having to specify this base URL every time, we can configure it once and only keep saying slash auth slash login slash auth slash contacts and yeah so which will make it a little bit cleaner also for the endpoints that need authentication almost all these we don't want to really be adding authorization headers to every request we can configure them in one spot and every time we use the client we create in that spot it's always going to have everything configured and also what's good is uh, we can be able to intercept different requests, different responses, and do something whenever some response calls are sent from the server. Or we can intercept the requests and maybe add a token, which we're actually going to be doing now. So what we want to do is install Axios. So yarn add Axios. Also, not yarn Axios. So yarn add Axios. Also, I want us to install a package that will enable us to have offline persistence for our token so that things like users preferences the settings the auth token we can keep them locally across different renders even when the user goes out of the app and comes back switch off the phones and then switches it back on so the module is called react native async storage so let's see how to get up and running with it so what we want to do is do a yarn install react native async storage then async storage so let's yarn add that. Okay. So as it installs, I'm going to go to our helpers. Remember, we have a folder called helpers. This is where I said we can put things like the Axios. So I'm going to create a file called Axios Interceptor.js. So the first thing we are going to need to do is create an instance. But first, we need to first import Axios from Axios. So now we can say axios.create. So when you create, we need to specify a config. So this config, we want to set the base URL. So we can say base URL. Remember how we set up our .env here to have our environment variables depending on the environment we are in. Now we can import this. So let's import all the env. So import envs like we saw earlier from config slash env like this so now we can quickly say we want it to be env dot backend url like that also if you have some headers that we share across requests we can put them here right now i'm gonna put headers there but initially we are going to be having some some headers and then we are going to be changing them intercepting to change them and adding the token if it is there so now we can say let headers equals it's going to be empty by default and then right here we need to create something called an interceptor actually specifically a request interceptor so for us to do a request interceptor whenever we create an act whenever we say axios create it gives us an axios inter instance so we can get that let's say instance is going to be axios create now here we can quickly do axios dot interceptors then we want to intercept the request so we can do request dot use so when we do dot use it's going to be giving us the config that that each request uses and also if there are any errors so we can get the config here by having config so when you get the config we can do something with it so also when there are any errors we can get them and then when we get the errors, of course, we want to throw them. So we can do something like promise.reject. Promise.reject. Then we want to reject the error. Okay. So once we have the config, so if we have the, the config that was used for that request, 
we want to check if you have the token in async storage so for us to get async storage we can do something like const token is gonna be called async is gonna be async storage dot get item then it's gonna be called token now this returns a promise meaning that right now the value won't be a variable but we can use the await syntax here and whenever we use await then we need to really be in an async function so we can do async here okay so that's gonna give us the token now we can check if we have the token and we can add another header for the authorization so we can say if token then you can do config dot headers dot authorization okay like that then it's gonna be equal to so with jwts like the one that we are using here we need to specify bearer something like this bearer then the jwt so here we can put bearer bearer and then the token itself so now that we have this we need to export it so you can say export default access instance like that okay so now we are intercepting the request and we are adding the token if we have it then if we don't have it of course this won't run so we won't have it now we also could intercept the responses so that when we get let's say an error from the server we can quickly navigate to the login page and also remove the token let's say if the token is uh, invalid or expired or something but we're going to be doing that one in a few videos coming up okay so now that we have this let's test it out let's go to like the register so you can come here then i'm going to create a use effect here so this is the method that gets run by default you don't need to call this it's the first method that gets called in the lifetime of the component so the use effect if we don't have any dependencies it's going to be called once now we want to call to use our access instance i believe that's how we called it axios instance c how did we name it we need to import it properly so it's called instance i'm going to rename this to axios to axios instance so now here we can use axios instance let's import it then we can do something like dot post so here we can do something like slash auth slash login because we want to really see where we are sending the request okay so when it's done now we can go to the register and if we come here inside the the log you see that we have an error so let's see what's happening here and defined is not uh, an object that's because whenever when we created the config we need to return it so here after we've added the token we need to return the config so make sure you're adding that now it's gonna come back let's make sure it reloads so if we come here you notice that nothing is happening here but every time we have uh, you see we get we got an error so we need to catch this of course so we would be catching it in here so having like a dot catch so let's do error let's console log error okay also you notice that this error is coming because our base url we need to have slash api here and also here okay so now if we come back to our axios then we can know that this would be slash api and now here we can put our slash here and test it out again so since we changed the environment variable we need to restart the the project so i'm gonna go here i'm gonna come over here stop the server and then we run it then i'm gonna put a flag to reset the cache to not cache any any environment variables also when it's done then we can restart the server so now that it's done we can do another check and now you can see that we get a 403 and everything is basically working the way we should 
So that means if you had a token in storage, it's going, it would be sent here and we really would not want to come in here and now start defining things like the headers to add the authorization token or having to hard code the URL again. Okay, so this is gonna do it for now. So if you enjoyed the video, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. I'll talk to you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye.